Blood saw Apothecary, Lin, filled with guilt, held a brush and swept away the dust and frost on the frozen Bai, who looked like a sculpted masterpiece. He coughed and said, Sorry, Bai. Big Brother didn't intentionally forget about you. It's just that something important happened yesterday, and I didn't think about it for a while. Just consider it experiencing life and enjoying the scenery. After all, life rarely offers such a good time. I endured. A night of northwest wind. Refreshing. He felt that he had been thoroughly, inside and out, completely, thoroughly, enlightened. The whole night, lonely and trembling, hanging there like a seaweed, a drifting seaweed. It's okay, it's okay. Consider it cosplaying a flag. After all, such opportunities are rare, and one should learn to cherish them. Lin patted his shoulder comfortingly. Well, enough nonsense. Let's talk about business. Can you tell me how you fell into this world? I've been thinking, and it feels a bit suspicious. Bai, frustrated, rubbed his head and said, Didn't I already tell you, big brother? I was going to the bar after school, got lost in a small alley by mistake, and then ended up on that street. Lin began to ponder. He always felt that things were not as simple as Bai described. Because according to the information he obtained from his teacher, creatures that fell into this world either had immense resentment and hatred after death, triggering some mechanism that automatically dragged them into this world like Alice, where they accidentally triggered some mechanism, opening a portal to this world. Your phone. Baiyi innocently fumbled around his body, then took out his smartphone from the inner pocket of his jacket. It's broken. The screen of the phone had long been shattered into a kaleidoscope, and the power button showed no response. Lin took the phone, carefully examining it inside and out. With the idea of giving it a try, Lin contemplated and initiated a diagnostic spell on the phone. He didn't expect to find anything. But in the next moment, he heard a sudden system prompt in his ears. In an instant, Lin's pupils contracted sharply. Curse. There was actually a curse fluctuation in his phone. This was ridiculous. Seeing Lin's change in expression, Baiyu was completely stunned and asked, Big brother, what's wrong with you? Lin solemnly said, holding up the phone, I found something impure in your phone. Maybe this could be the reason for your fall into this world. As soon as these words were spoken, Baiyu turned pale with shock. His heart raced. This, is this a joke? Lin said seriously, further investigation is needed. But since I detected a curse, you must have come into contact with something impure before coming here. Without further ado, Lin immediately took the phone, bringing Baiyi to a room in the basement. The room was full of mechanical tools, which was also his teacher's place for mechanical modifications. Lin tinkered with the phone and calmly said, wait for me outside. I'll try to see if I can repair the damage. If successful, we might draw some conclusions. After drinking the soup, he gained knowledge and a curse. He hadn't had time to study the curse, but the knowledge was easily absorbed. This knowledge gave him the possibility to repair the phone. Time flew by quickly. After a while, the door opened. Baiyi immediately rushed forward, eagerly asking, Big brother, how is it? Lin walked out with a serious expression, stretched his neck a bit, and calmly said, It should be able to function now, but there's no suitable material to replace the screen. It won't have a significant impact, though. Take some time to recall whether you did anything unusual before coming here. Baiyi thought hard. Let me think. Two nights before I entered here, I skipped a class, went outside to buy the latest manga, then had a bowl of ramen, and in the evening, I arranged to meet my girlfriend at a hotel. Snap. A smoking bump appeared on Baiyi's head. Lin closed his eyes and said, Get to the point. Baiyi, rubbing his head in pain, said, Ah. In the morning, I sent my girlfriend back home. Then, with plenty of time left, I secretly went to an internet cafe to go online. Just at that moment, Baiyi suddenly froze. He seemed to recall something all of a sudden and started pondering. Wait a minute. Let me think. I remember that when I went to the internet cafe to go online, after playing a game for a while and feeling a bit tired, because I had consumed a lot of energy in the evening, I thought of browsing the web before logging off. Then, then I remember it seemed like I clicked on a pop-up window. His breathing suddenly became rapid. I remember now. Lin squinted, and that pop-up window said, Want to truly live? Yes or no? Did you choose yes? He explained to Lin in detail what he saw on that website. It was a web page without a domain or address, and the entire page was a dark type that made people feel uncomfortable. Let's take a look. If it was because of his experience that he was pulled into this world, maybe they could find a way back. But Lin was already certain. He must have encountered a supernatural event. The shattered screen of the phone slowly lit up, and Baiyi looked at it with bated breath. Soon, the phone turned on. 
Bai Yi quickly opened the photo album, and as soon as he entered, Lin saw a series of extremely explicit pictures. The male protagonist in those pictures looked very familiar, obviously Bai Yi. There were also some pictures of Bai Yi wearing what seemed to be his girlfriend's clothes, posing provocatively. Uh, Bai Yi's eyes widened instantly. Wait, wait, personal privacy, let me find it first. Big brother, don't look. Lin glanced at him and said, you're quite extravagant, is it cosplay or role reversal? Bai Yi's head turned as red as a boiling kettle. He stared with wide eyes, his heart pounding, quickly scrolling through the album. Soon, he found that photo. Big brother, it's this one. Lin looked at the screen and immediately saw the photo Bai Yi took, along with the densely packed text on the page. Lin squinted his eyes. He didn't recognize these characters, but for some reason, just a glance made you feel uncomfortable, as if something was pulling your gaze and trapping you in it. Lin quickly focused. He carefully browsed it, and soon found several Chinese characters entered at the bottom of that contract. Lin immediately noticed that behind Bai Yi in the reflection, there seemed to be a dark figure. Who is behind you? Lin asked seriously. After Lin's reminder, Bai Yi immediately noticed the figure behind him in the reflection. His whole body trembled, feeling a chill rising from his heart. I, I don't know. Bai Yi trembled. At that time, I seemed very confused. I didn't feel anything behind me. After leaving the internet cafe, I, I seemed to have forgotten about it. Lin fell into contemplation. If this was related to Bai Yi entering this world, could the text on this photo also come from the dark world? He raised his head and said calmly, I'll ask my master. Maybe we can get some answers. Bloodsaw put on reading glasses, looked seriously at the content displayed on the object handed over by Lin, and said, Disciple, how did you get this thing? Where did you get it from? This was taken by my human friend before he fell into this world. I always feel that it is related to his fall into this place. Do you recognize the characters above? Upon hearing this, Bloodsaw carefully looked at it for a while, took off his glasses, and said seriously, I've seen similar records in some documents. It seems to be a spell of an ancient clan in the dark world. I will serve the dominator of blood and flesh. I will heed the call of the ancient god, offering my blood and flesh to the grace of my god. I will follow the codex, falling into the eternal night. I will dedicate myself, awaiting the summons and responding to the god. Signer, 20. Bloodsaw raised his head, looked at Lin, and raised an eyebrow. This is a sacrificial contract from an evil god. Did your friend sign this thing? Lin nodded, he did, but he didn't know the content. Bloodsaw closed his eyes, handed the phone to Lin, and said, that's normal. Many kings and root-level beings in this world claim to be evil gods, spreading disasters in various worlds to fulfill their evil purposes. It seems that your friend's world has been targeted by that evil god. Signing this kind of contract is like establishing a connection with the evil god. The signer will inevitably be summoned to the world where the god is. But it looks like your friend had a small accident on the way to being pulled into this world. He looked at Lin deeply, naturally seeing through Lin's thoughts. Lin pondered, so, he can't go back. No. Bloodsaw gave a negative answer, raised his head, and said, he might return soon. At this statement, Lin shook, looking surprised. Teacher, what did you say? Bloodsaw shook his head, explaining, because fundamentally, this is still a summoning contract. Just like in the world view, other worlds use special rituals to request the arrival of a creature from the dark world. They only briefly come to this world, ranging from a few hours to a few days, but definitely not more than a month. Unless they die, they will immediately be sent back to their original dimension when the time is up. This is also the most economical and efficient way for the evil gods in this world to pull creatures from other worlds, because they won't let them live for long anyway. Lin was instantly shocked, saying, So you mean, my fellow villager can still go back? Bloodsaw said seriously, high probability. If nothing unexpected happens, he is now essentially a summoned being. As long as he doesn't die, going back is just a matter of time. Lin walked out of the teacher's room with a frown. He raised his head, looking solemnly at Bai Yi. Seeing him come back, Bai Yi hurriedly approached, asking, Big brother, how is it? Do you know what's written above? Lin exhaled and showed a wry smile on his face. Then he extended his hand to Bai Yi. Congratulations, Bai Yi. You are much luckier than all the creatures that fell into this world. Bai Yi was puzzled, opening his mouth but not understanding what the big brother meant. I mean, you should be able to return to your own world in the next few days. After hearing this news, Bai Yi's brain was almost blank, followed by unimaginable shock and joy. Big brother, is what you said true? Do I? Do I really have a chance? Lin smiled and said, most likely. In an instant, Bai Yi was so excited that he almost jumped up. 
His breathing was rapid, and for a moment, he found it hard to accept this sudden and immense joy. He paced back and forth, trying to digest the overwhelming happiness in his heart. But then, he suddenly froze. In Lin's smiling expression, he saw something. He instantly thought of something and exclaimed, What about you, big brother? I can't go. Bai Yi was puzzled. Lin explained with a smile, Because you signed a summoning contract, you were enticed by some existence to be pulled into this world. Although there might have been some accidents that prevented you from being pulled into the realm of that evil god, when the summoning time comes, you will still be sent back. But I'm different. I have no idea how I entered here. I can't go back with you. Bai Yi was wide-eyed, and his brain went blank. In other words, is this a one-person round-trip ticket? But if he goes back alone and leaves Big Brother here, that, that's simply, even though they only knew each other for one night, and this Big Brother was quite terrifying. Finding a friendly fellow villager in this terrifying world was truly more gratifying than anything else. Because without Big Brother's help, he would probably have died long ago. He scratched his head, frowned, paced back and forth, and the joy he just felt was quickly washed away. Summoning, summoning, was he summoned because of that contract? Then, in an instant, he suddenly had an epiphany. He excitedly grabbed Lin's shoulder and said, Big Brother, I have an idea. You said I was summoned by some existence in this world. Is there a possibility? I can also summon you to my world. At this critical moment, Bai Yi demonstrated an extremely active brain. Lin was also taken aback by his words, then raised an eyebrow and said, I'm not sure about that. This kind of mysterious thing is my first encounter, but there are indeed some cults in many worlds that like to perform rituals to summon creatures from other dimensions. Bai Yi was overjoyed, then that's settled, right. Big brother, no matter what, we can give it a try. If it fails, there's nothing to lose. If it succeeds, then big brother, you can also come to my world and reminisce about our hometown. Seeing Bai Yi's excited expression, Lin's thoughts also became more active. Yes, if this method really works, even if it's not his true hometown, he can be summoned to see a similar world. And if it's really a parallel world, then maybe, in Bai Yi's world, there is another himself and his parents. Lin raised his head and looked at Bai Yi seriously, saying, let's give it a try. A few minutes later, Lin quickly brought Bai Yi to his teacher's underground library, his expression serious, and began searching quickly. His teacher's knowledge was very diverse. He was a true scholar. In his library, you could always find all sorts of strange books, and there must be books about summoning rituals. After careful searching, Lin quickly found a thick and deeply hidden volume in a corner. Found it. Lin squinted his eyes. He opened it. The Complete Guide to Summoning the Otherworldly Cat Maiden. Snap. He closed it with a dark expression. Lin continued searching. Finally, from another dusty corner, he once again pulled out a book. Contract, Rituals for the Descent of the Evil God in the Dark World. Lin remained calm and quickly started browsing. The book recorded many methods and rituals for summoning evil entities, including offerings of blood and flesh, soul dedications, evil spirit prayers, and so on. All of them were extremely taboo knowledge. Big Brother, did you find a method? Bai Yi asked eagerly. I found some, but to summon a specific creature, it requires a lot of materials and sacrifices, as well as a special dark environment. The stronger the target, the more materials are needed. He quickly transcribed the method and ritual array onto a piece of paper in Chinese characters. Then he turned around, serious, and said, I'll consult my teacher. With his help, there's a high probability of success. I he immediately nodded vigorously, ready to follow. But at that moment, hum, a mysterious vibration seemed to come from his mind. He immediately felt an indescribable sense of detachment. He looked at his hands in amazement and said, Big brother, I think, time may be running out. Lin turned his head instantly. Then he immediately saw Bai Yi's body slowly becoming ethereal. Could it be that the summoning contract's effectiveness has already expired? Indeed, he had been in this strange world for at least three days, which, for a summoning contract, was not a very short time. Seeing his body becoming more and more ethereal, at this moment, Lin couldn't care much. Swish, he tore off the page he had just transcribed on the notebook about the specific creature summoning ritual, and put it in his pocket. He looked serious, grabbing by his shoulder and said, Remember, when you go back, try the method on the paper and remember my name. I'm Lin. This is the dark world. Oh right. He suddenly remembered the explanation in that book. Without hesitation, Lin pulled out his night demon blade, cut off his little finger in one stroke, and blood splattered. Bai Yi exclaimed, Big brother, what are you doing? 
Lin solemnly picked up the severed little finger and stuffed it into his pocket, saying, This is my blood and flesh. If the summoning ritual succeeds, my blood and flesh will be a beacon, allowing you to locate my position faster. Maybe it can increase the success rate of summoning me. Right? Lin quickly paced and then immediately picked up paper and pen from the table, seriously writing a letter in Chinese. After quickly folding the letter, he solemnly handed it to Bai, saying, I don't know if your world is really a parallel world, but if it is, remember the address on the letter and mail it over. Do you remember? Lin gritted his teeth. Bai's face was full of astonishment, and his body became more and more ethereal. Finally, he nodded forcefully, his expression serious. Lin finally breathed a sigh of relief, shaking his head, that's good enough. His body gradually became ethereal, but at the moment before disappearing, he suddenly remembered something and shouted in panic towards Lin. Big brother, you said you would give me stainless steel. Hum, a mysterious shock. Bai disappeared from the spot, indicating that he had probably been sent back to his own world. Hospital. Bai lay on the hospital bed with closed eyes, and one could vaguely see the hideous stitches on his chest. Terrifying, eerie, and unsettling. But strangely, beneath those stitches, there was a small tied bow, looking somewhat cute. The director adjusted his reading glasses, frowning. But further examination is needed, and judging by the stitches on his chest, he recently underwent open-heart surgery. The person who sutured the wound did so very crudely and roughly. I've been a doctor for so many years, and it's the first time I've seen someone sew up a wound like a hemorrhoid. Yet the patient survived. I think it's better not to inform the family for now. Then the old director lifted the blanket covering Bai's lower body. What the heck? Even though he had many years of investigative experience, witnessing this scene made him feel a huge challenge and shock to his soul. Preliminary diagnosis suggests that the subject has undergone a physical castration. What's happening outside? Officer Liu frowned and asked, Chief, it's the patient's family. After learning that their son has been found, they rushed over and are now outside, insisting on coming in. Just as Officer Liu was about to speak, a middle-aged man and woman burst in crying. Bai's mother cried loudly, but when they tried to rush over to get a closer look at their son, several doctors quickly stopped them. What are you doing? My son is back, and I want to see him. Their anxious eyes immediately fell on a certain area under Bai. The air suddenly fell silent. Bai's father exclaimed, What the heck? Bai's mother said, What the heck? Under the tremendous shock, the elderly couple's eyes rolled back, and they collapsed backward in front of everyone. Half an hour later, in the radiology department, the dean and several professionals were waiting solemnly in front of the professional imaging equipment, waiting for the machine to start. How is the patient? The dean inquired. He has regained consciousness, but the patient's mental state seems a bit off. He keeps muttering about stainless steel 20, making it difficult for us, one doctor reported. After his 20 was chopped off, he couldn't accept it for a while, fantasizing about more robust 20 that could resist weapons, which is an intense manifestation of his inner resistance. Several doctors were teary-eyed, saying, what a pitiful young man. At that moment, a doctor waiting for the x-rays glanced at the images taken and furrowed his brow. He quickly walked over, holding the x-ray images and said, Dean, I may have found some issues. The boy's organs seem a bit. The dean, with years of experience in reading images, took the x-ray and put on his reading glasses. What's wrong? See for yourself. The dean carefully examined it and soon was astonished. The heart. Why has it shifted to the right? As he spoke, he opened another x-ray. The dean exclaimed. He stared at the image in shock, saying, The, the, the heart has shifted to the left again. Are you sure you didn't mix up the images? The doctor frowned, just came out, couldn't have mixed up. Maybe the machine had some malfunctions, otherwise, how could the heart shift left and right like this? He opened a third x-ray. Puff, the dean spat out a mouthful of thick tea. He pointed at the image on the x-ray, his hands shaking like a sieve. Sagged. Why is it sagging? How did the heart sag into the stomach? This heart seemed restless. The dean's teeth chattered as he hurriedly took a quick-acting heart pill. A few minutes later, in the radiology x-ray room, dozens of hospital professionals followed behind the dean, gazing solemnly at the slowly emerging full-body scan of the boy named Bai Yi on the screen. Equipment is working fine, everything is good, and no malfunctions have occurred. Wait a minute, dean, did you all see that just now? Just now, his heart gave a kick to his lung. Everyone, the surrounding doctors looked at him puzzled, strange expressions on their faces. Don't casually make weird jokes, okay? Kicking the lung, why not say they are fighting for territory? 
The doctor, shocked, tremblingly pointed at the screen. I'm serious. I didn't lie to you. Just now, that heart indeed kicked the lung next to it. It's true, it extended its foot and kicked. The crowd disdainfully looked at him. Then they turned and glanced at the X-ray image on the screen. Snap. A red and chubby fist extended from the edge of the heart, quietly giving a punch to the adjacent lung. In an instant, the surroundings fell silent, and you could hear a pin drop. All the doctors had their mouths wide open, petrified, standing there motionless. Snap. As they stared in astonishment, the heart extended a chubby red foot and kicked the adjacent lung. The dean sat there in a daze, tremblingly reached for his old reading glasses, and in the silent stillness, Shukli took out eye drops and put two drops into his eyes. Tremblingly, he extended two fingers and said, It's, my old eyes are failing me. But before he could finish his sentence, the heart suddenly extended a chubby red fist. But this time, before it could strike, the lungs on both sides swiftly moved over, extending tentacles and pummeling it with plus. Snap, 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 snap. Hum, seeing this scene, the gazes of all the doctors present became vacant. Dean, something's wrong. The patient's heart rate suddenly has huge fluctuations. So fast. A doctor mumbled, I saw it. It's fighting back. In the next moment, there was a splashing sound. Bad news. The Dean's heart condition has relapsed again. Quickly, take him to the emergency room. A doctor urgently shouted. Dark World, Ghost Alley. Since the time-limited curse removal ability hadn't worn off yet, Lin finally found time to take little Alice out for a walk. Although Ghost Alley wasn't much better than Soul Street. Day or night, the thick black fog and the oppressive atmosphere remained the same. But as Lin walked with Alice in his arms, her sitting on his arm, she displayed great curiosity, looking around with effort and finding everything fascinating. Lin had a bold spirit, but other dark creatures could easily sense the majestic ghost energy emanating from the little girl in his arms. Want to walk down yourself? Lin asked. Alice vigorously shook her head, her long hair swaying and touching Lin's nose with each movement. Apparently, she expressed a clear refusal. Then, with one hand hooked around Lin's neck, the other curiously reached out, pointing at a dark creature sneaking away from the wall in the distance. Are you hungry? No, Alice, you can't just see a creature and think it's food. They haven't provoked us, and we can't just grab and bite them, okay? The dark creature's entire body's hair stood up. Ding. Fear level of dark mist liquor towards you plus 10. Warning. All creatures in Ghost Alley, please be aware. A death omen level fierce ghost is on the loose. Be cautious when going out. How come it's him again? Why is that guy again? A few days ago, he was riding around with a origin level girl's head, and now he's carrying a death omen level fierce ghost for a stroll. Isn't he afraid of these dark creatures? Why is he so brave? All the doors and windows on both sides of the street closed with a clang. Like a night parade of a hundred ghosts, every living being closed their doors, not daring to open. Lin looked around at the tightly closed doors, feeling disappointed. Lin shook his head in disappointment, boredly taking out his homemade lollipop, teasing Alice by hiding it from her playful little tongue. After a stroll, he also thoroughly cleansed Alice's soul. Back in the backyard, Lin placed Alice on his thigh, letting her curiously move her feet and look around, while he took the opportunity to open his panel. After handling everything today, tomorrow, he could officially trigger the night medic's job change quest, his first job change. He looked at his level 10 status, then pondered and asked in his mind, System, I want to ask, I now know that origin level is the power ceiling of this world, and below origin level, there are kings, and below kings are death omen. So what is my current rank? I feel with my current combat strength, I can't possibly be just a level 10 weakling, right? Ding. The panel is only for visualizing your abilities and attributes. Please rely on real combat strength for an accurate assessment. Lin's heart was stirred. He contemplated. Evidently, each race had drastically different methods to enhance their strength. Take, for example, evil spirits. Alice, after bursting forth with extreme hatred upon learning the truth, directly entered the death omen level. In other words, don't be fooled by Alice's harmless appearance in front of him. If her hatred were to erupt completely, it would undoubtedly be an unimaginable catastrophe. In simple terms, she should be on the edge of the origin level, comparable to a peak king. But if combat experience and various items were factored in, a peak king should be able to overpower her. Big Brother Titan should be the most terrifying force he had encountered so far, followed by Anti-Witch. But even so, he still got his head chopped off. Clearly, beyond the dark world, at higher levels, there were even more unimaginable entities. For instance, the Supreme will in his field of vision. And the teacher, the puppet lady, and the blood-clad lady should be at a similar level, but definitely lower than the death omen level. 
However, if they were to engage in combat, wanting to have a back and forth with Alice shouldn't be difficult. But Lin felt, in the gap between level 100 and below anti-blood, there should be one or more ranks. Because anti-blood and the others were undoubtedly elites among elites, and those below them should be the true pillars of the entire dark world. The middle of the pyramid, Lin raised his head, saying, What is the status of creatures below level 100? A brief silence. This time, the system gave him a response. Sentient beings. Brother, Alice awakened him from his thoughts. It turned out that Alice had been staring at him with her empty big eyes for a long time. Apparently, the lollipop was already finished. What's wrong? Lin came to his senses, revealing a smile. Alice raised her hand, full of sutures, and opened her mouth, shaking her head, uncomfortable. Then Lin immediately saw that the sutured area on her throat was slowly oozing out the sugary liquid she had just ingested. The sugary liquid, mixed with pus and blood, flowed from the stitches to her chest. Splash! In a house in the backyard, Lin poured hot water into a large wooden basin, then added a lot of soap. The basin immediately bubbled with a large amount of white foam. Lin waved at Alice, who was peeking at the door, raised his eyebrows, and pointed to his chin, saying, Come on. Because I was too hasty before, the stitches I gave you were a bit rough. Take a bath first, and later, Big Brother will sew you up again. I guarantee it won't be exposed this time. Alice floated in slowly. She looked at the foamy wooden basin, then raised her head, opening her hands toward Lin with misty eyes. The meaning was obvious. She wanted her brother's help with the bath. This immediately touched on Lin's blind spot in thinking. Lin froze in place for half a second. Then he seriously squatted down, looking at Alice, and said, Alice, first, you have to understand that you're a girl. Bathing is something that should not be assisted by the opposite sex, even if it's your own brother, especially when he is dry. Alice lifted her head and asked, why? Lin said seriously, because you're still young and don't understand. Alice stared blankly, then intermittently asked, brother, how old? Lin smiled slightly, saying, 17, almost 18. Alice lowered her head, looking at her ten sutured fingers, saying, Alice, 201 years. Silence surrounded them. The smile on Lin's face froze. She must be counting her age after death, right? But this definitely didn't count. Because if the age after death were included, then little Alice would be over 3,000 years old. Lin finally touched his forehead, solemnly saying, Just this once. Next time, you have to do it yourself. Understand? Alice blinked her eyes, not answering. Ding, shamelessly washing Alice's body, Alice's hatred minus one, trust in you plus twenty. Ding, making Alice feel physical and mental pleasure and warmth, Alice's hatred minus one, favorability towards you plus twenty. Ding, congratulations, host, for triggering the stage achievement, bone surgery summoning, brushing a large amount of sister's favorability in a short time and having prolonged wicked physical contact can be obtained. People should at least not. This indicates that you have taken an important step towards the irreversible path of a sister complex. You gain permanent layers. Charm plus one, archery plus two, physique plus two. Shut up. Always in a situation that was clearly innocent, suddenly giving you an achievement that was not pure at all was really too wicked. This was clearly just routine care and pampering. How did it suddenly become a different flavor when it came out of the system? A few minutes later, he took out a package of fine threads from the operating room. Then he took out a needle, saying seriously, Alice, I'm going to start removing the stitches. If it hurts, endure it for a while, or transform into a ghost state from your body. After I re-stitch you, you can possess it again. She didn't feel pain unless her soul was burned by a sacred attack. Because, for evil spirits, the body was just a shell. Lin said seriously, all right, I'm starting. With that, he picked up the needle and thread and lightly pricked. Yeah. Alice almost instinctively covered her small mouth, closed her eyes all at once, and her toes reflexively curled up, feeling a clear stabbing pain. A hint of confusion appeared in her eyes. Will it hurt? Strange. Very strange. Although very slight, it was indeed a bit painful. One after another, throughout her body, she leaned on the table with force, closed her eyes tightly, and her body trembled slightly. After spending a few hours helping Alice re-sew her body, and after a wave of goodwill, Lin knew it was time to complete the night doctor's class change mission. His teacher suddenly knocked on the door. Teacher, is there something you need? Lin opened the door, inviting the teacher in, and considerately handed a cup of hot tea to the teacher. Bloodsaw sat in front of the table, gazing at Lin, and said, So, have you really decided? You're leaving tomorrow to find the night physicians. Lin smiled. Of course, after all, as you said, it's the most skilled medical organization. I'm determined to become a healer who alleviates suffering. Of course, I have to go to the best institution. 
Bloodsaw looked at him deeply. He also knew that his disciple had a stubborn personality, and once he made up his mind, it was unlikely to change. Bloodsaw shook his head and said, Well, I know I can't persuade you, but this journey is dangerous. It's your first time venturing out alone. Take these potions, they might save your life at a critical moment. Saying this, Bloodsaw took out a few bottles of potions from his bosom and placed them on the table. Lin was curious, Teacher, what are these? Bloodsaw raised his head and said heavily, these are high-quality legendary potions that your teacher obtained during travels in the dark world. They are very rare. Let me tell you, with these potions, even if you're a pig, they'll make you feel on top of the world. Lin was amazed. He reached for the bottles of potions, and the system's prompt sounded in his ears. Mental Enhancement Potion. Quality, Legendary. Physique Enhancement Potion. Quality, Legendary. Lin stared in astonishment at the introductions of the potions. He couldn't find words to express his feelings. Bloodsaw said solemnly, Night physicians are not easy to deal with. You must have strong mental power to resist their interference. You also need a robust physique to avoid death under their surgical knives. Although they probably won't kill people, it's better to be prepared. Tears welled up in Lin's eyes, and he said, Teacher, I, Bloodsaw interrupted, skip the sentimentality for now. It easily gives people goosebumps. Just remember your teacher's kindness in your heart. With tears in his eyes, Lin said, I won't say anything more, teacher. A day as a disciple is a lifetime as a father. A night passed without words. Early the next morning, outside Bloodsaw's apothecary, black mist surged. After bidding farewell to Bloodsaw, Lin did not leave spirit wandering alley. Instead, he quickly turned left and right, arriving at a small alley. He took out the job change item for night physicians from the system space. System, use it. In an instant, the task item in his hand turned into a halo, flowing into his body. A prompt sounded in his ears. Ding, you have used the job change item, triggering the night physician series mission. Stage 1 mission. Find a night physician in Silent Town and raise your visibility within the night physician faction to 100 to trigger the next stage of the mission. Tip, killing is prohibited during the mission. Otherwise, it will cause extreme displeasure from the Night Physician faction. Tip. A large amount of visibility has a chance to increase your reputation within the Night Physician faction, and may allow you to obtain a higher level Night Physician title and rewards after completing the job change mission. Just as the system prompt ended, a hexagram teleportation array appeared at Lin's feet. In the next moment, his body disappeared from the original location. You have entered the Cursed Realm, Silent Town. With the accompanying prompt, Lin opened his eyes and found himself at a crossroads. Surrounded by silence, black mist surged. A red moon hung high in the sky. In front of him, there was a decrepit road sign with a few large characters. Silent town. In the distance, amid the night and mist, a dark and mysterious town could be vaguely seen nestled in the forest. It feels a bit like a horror movie. Lin carefully surveyed the surrounding environment, his expression calm. This was his first time in such a completely unfamiliar environment, and with sparse population, it was not as close to the spirit wandering alley as Soul Street. Swish, swish, swish. It seemed like something was flashing in the depths of the dark forest. A shiver ran down the innocent young man's spine. Gurgling, without saying a word, Lin directly unscrewed the lids of the potions and gulped down a bottle of each that his teacher had given him. Din, you have used mental enhancement potion X1, and your mental power has increased. Din, you have used Physique Enhancement Potion X1, and your physique has increased. With a full duration of 24 hours, Lin didn't plan on conserving them. After taking the potions, Lin immediately felt his senses becoming unusually clear. Every movement in the forest, he could accurately perceive. The substantial boost to his physique made him feel like his blood was boiling, as if there was an inexhaustible strength. Better go take a look at that little town first. I have to admit, I'm a bit nervous. Lin strode toward the town, his expression resolute. However, what he didn't notice was that in the depths of the forest, one black shadow after another flickered among the branches, a pair of bloodthirsty and brutal red eyes reflecting terrifying light. At the same time, in Silent Town, amidst the rolling black mist, one torch after another illuminated the surroundings. Vaguely, one could see dark-skinned human guards crouching in prepared positions, each holding a rifle, aiming at the black mist-covered outskirts of the town, their expressions serious. Not only humans but also some dark elves, dark dwarfs, and a few solitary one-eyed giants were present. Without exception, their gazes were extremely vigilant. Mayor, with the red moon hanging high, those monsters will definitely attack our town. You should go back and hide first. 
We can handle it here. A young dark-skinned man cautiously loaded silver bullets into his rifle, speaking to an old man with white hair. The old man had a determined expression and said firmly, This is not our original world. The holy light cannot shine in this hellish place. Although I am old, I swear to defend my people. He grasped a staff, lifted his head, and with aged eyes, stared straight at the outskirts. Increase vigilance. Don't mind me, get your guns ready. Not a single monster should get in. From the distant black mist, there came a series of wolf howls, sending chills down everyone's spines. On top of a pitch black mountain peak, the red moon envelops the earth. A naked man with a crimson body clings to the cliff on top of the mountain, gazing ominously at the red moon. Suddenly, a hint of pain appears on his face, and densely packed blood vessels emerge on his cheeks. Crack, crack, crack. The sound of twisted flesh and blood. His skull keeps elongating, sharp fangs slowly growing in his mouth, and numerous pitch black fur emerge from his skin. Howl, the wolf's howl. Under the blood moon, he slowly transforms into a ferocious werewolf. A dark shadow swiftly climbs below the cliff, landing behind him like a wild beast. Leader, a scar-faced werewolf kneels, revealing sharp fangs, and says solemnly, Everything is ready. We can launch the attack anytime. However, our scouts on the way to Silent Town found an outsider, seems to be a human. The leader, called the Shu Ling, slowly turns his head, reflecting his appearance in blood-red eyes, and says, Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? The werewolf hoarsely replies, Absolutely not. About 17 or 18 years old, slender body, delicate and weak, a very frail human. And he's hopping around, completely disregarding us. The leader squints his eyes, where is he? Right on the path we must take to attack Silent Village. Go check. The leader lifts his head, leaping from the cliff in an instant his body turning into a series of afterimages as he plunges into the forest. A few minutes later, the leader, with narrowed eyes, silently lands on a tree branch. Behind him, countless pairs of blood-red eyes follow. Leader, he's right there. He squints, looking in the direction of the road to Silent Town. Suddenly, he sees an innocent young man carrying a chainsaw walking on the road. In his mind, a few words instantly appear. Young, handsome, weak, easy to bully. The werewolf says heavily, Leader, you see, isn't he arrogant? It's like he has never experienced the harshness of society. The leader observes the youth from a distance and says deeply, but he seems to be a doctor. This statement shakes all the surrounding werewolves inexplicably. The werewolf hesitates, do you suspect he is? The leader says deeply, the town is very close to the lunatic's base. If not for that, with just a few dozen rifles and two holy priests, we would have taken the sacred relic from them. You know, those lunatics are very interested in us. The werewolves around, with blood-red eyes, show a moment of hesitation, evidently fearing those lunatics mentioned by their leader. The werewolf expresses fear, Leader, I don't want to be dissected. If he really is a night doctor, maybe we should. Retreat. Smack. The slap. The leader squints and hoarsely says, What's there to be nervous about? I just have suspicions, no evidence. If he's really a night doctor, they always wear beak masks when practicing medicine to signify their identity. This person doesn't have one, probably not. He stands up and indifferently says, being so delicate, if he's just an outsider, we might as well convert him. Perhaps he could even be a son-in-law for me. In this damn place, there aren't many people as handsome as him. Move. In an instant, one after another, werewolves with blood-red eyes swiftly move through the forest, heading towards Lin. Meanwhile, on the path under the blood moon, Lin carries the night demon blade, walking with large steps. In the black forest, there are stirring sounds. His mind is exceptionally clear. Almost at the moment those sounds arise, he stops, maintaining an expression, motionless. Behind him, wild roars echo, and several figures quickly close the distance. Almost in an instant, a wolf howl. In the forest on all sides, one after another pitch black werewolves leap up. Under the blood moon's illumination, their fur shines with glaring blood-red glimmers. And under the blood moon, Lin, standing there, looks innocent, like a child. Information about a werewolf appears in his mind. Blood Moon Werewolf. Race, Human, Werewolf. Attribute, Subsequent Evil. Level, 43. Combat Ability, Extremely Strong Healing Ability, and Berserk Melee Capabilities. Introduction. Blood Moon Werewolves, dwelling in the Cursed Territory, transform into wolves due to the plague and curse spread by the Night Doctor. Whenever the Red Moon descends, they are forcibly transformed into bloodthirsty werewolves, becoming even more bloodthirsty and ferocious. However, compared to the truly chaotic and evil werewolves in the Dark World, they still appear weak. 
Almost as soon as he reads the introduction, dozens of werewolves are already close. Lin can clearly see their sharp fangs and blood-red eyes. In an instant, the werewolf about to leap towards Lin's face changes dramatically because he instantly sees the clothes on the weak human youth's back tear open. One after another, thick and sturdy tentacles burst out. Too fast. The speed is just too fast. Almost in the blink of an eye, those tentacles, like winding snakes, burst into the sky, entwining their bodies with a rushing sound. One, two, dozens, the tentacles suddenly tighten, a strong force comes, and their bodies are directly thrown into the sky, then heavily slammed onto the ground. Seeing this scene, in the forest, the leader of the werewolf's pupils suddenly contract. Not good. Without saying a word, he immediately led all the werewolves to rush towards the support. Just now, he vaguely felt that something was wrong. After all, this was a dark world. How could a human walking on the road here with such arrogance be an ordinary human? In this world, the more normal they look, the more abnormal they are. Tentacle monster. The werewolves rushing to support around were also shocked, feeling a wave of horror in their hearts. Because they knew very well that in this world, tentacles were a symbol of high-level existence. Because it represented the ultimate chaos and distortion, it was the embodiment of extreme evil. Even for some evil spirits, evolving tentacles was a proof of identity. And more importantly, those with long tentacles are perverts. Attack. The densely packed werewolves rushed out of the dark forest, their eyes blood red, like beasts on all fours, quickly charging towards the monster on the ground, the one who was pulling their companions. A blood red light burst from the eyes of the werewolf leader. He almost instantly flashed behind Lin at lightning speed. His sharp claws cut through the air, fiercely reaching for Lin's neck. But just at the moment when he was about to fall on Lin's neck, a hand suddenly appeared in front of him. Ding. The palm of that hand suddenly revealed a set of white teeth. He was instantly shocked, but it was already too late. Whoosh. That hand suddenly bit his hand, performed a 360-degree spin, and threw him out directly. Leader. Seeing this scene, the werewolves rushing up were shocked, but the longer they exposed themselves under the blood moon, the more ferocious and bloodthirsty they became and the dozens of werewolves rushing out of the forest had already surrounded Lin. They launched a fierce attack on Lin as he faced the approaching monsters. It's a bit too much. Lin stared with his eyes wide open, like an innocent teenager. He decisively abandoned the dozen or so werewolves entangled with the tentacles. At the moment when the werewolves violently attacked, the tentacles behind him lifted his body, allowing him to leap tens of meters into the air. Looking down at the ground where the ferocious werewolves were flooding in like a tide, Lin said seriously, I warn you, speak nicely. Don't provoke me. I've taken drugs today, and I'm afraid of my own brutality. Just as he finished speaking, his body suddenly sank downward. He looked astonishingly down at his feet and immediately saw that the werewolves were starting to bite the tentacles supporting him on the ground. Crunch, the bloody fangs instantly bit the tentacles, forcefully pulling them outward. Lin warned, a gentleman doesn't use his hands. Apparently, his words had no effect. Lin suddenly reached out his hand, facing the werewolves below. He said seriously, everyone, don't blame me. Ding, would you like to activate random diagnosis on the designated target immediately? Yes, in an instant, Lin's gaze focused on the nearest werewolves. Random diagnosis instantly activated. Ding, you have diagnosed diseases for the target, severe itching all over the body. Ding, you have diagnosed diseases for the target, angina pectoris. Ding, you have diagnosed diseases for the target, severe prostate ulcer. Ding, you have diagnosed diseases for the target, abnormally strong mating desire. With the prompts in his ears, Lin's gaze quickly shifted targets, continuously assigning various diseases to one werewolf after another. And the werewolf at the forefront, who is biting Lin's tentacles, pulled forcefully, only to be shocked to see that his pull not only didn't break the tentacles, but left all his teeth on the tentacles. With a wipe of his hand, gums ulcerated, he was shocked, not knowing what had happened. He immediately turned around and looked around, but this look immediately made him shiver all over. Not knowing when, the werewolves around him fell to the ground one by one, writhing in pain. Some werewolves' fur quickly fell off, some kept dry heaving, and some screamed in itching, tearing at their own skin. What? What is this? He was extremely shocked. And at this moment, he suddenly felt an abnormal sensation in his own body. He subconsciously looked down. My is 20 rotted. It rotted. In an instant, one werewolf after another around him fell to the ground in pain for various reasons. Seeing this terrifying scene, the werewolves on the periphery trembled, and a trace of fear flashed in their eyes. They quickly retreated. Curse. It must be an evil curse. That guy is not human. He is definitely not human. 
In an instant, the hundreds of werewolves who had just come to kill had all fallen to the ground, wailing. The werewolf leader trembled, standing alone there, swallowing hard. All the fur on his body stood up, because this terrifying scene was the first time he had seen it. This has already exceeded the physical level. In his eyes, reflected the mysterious human who seemed like an urban legend, with the crimson blood moon projecting a bloody light behind him, making him look like a weird final boss. He regretted it. Why did he mess with himself for no reason? Damn it, he seemed to have provoked a monster that spreads plagues and curses. His hair stood on end. Fortunately, it seemed that he hadn't been cursed yet. He could still run. Without saying a word, he immediately turned around, took big steps, and was about to escape. But just at that moment, ding, you have diagnosed diseases for the target, jet-type diarrhea. Under the shocked gaze of the werewolves lying on the ground around him, like the blooming of a bud, it was as if a high-pressure water gun had been twisted open. Puff, a sound of ultimate blooming explosion. The werewolf leader, terrified yet exhilarated, arched towards the sky. Oh, 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 oh. In an instant, it was as if golden flower petals were falling like rain, resembling countless brilliant chrysanthemum petals in the warm night sky. All the werewolves stood still, mouths wide open, their eyes reflecting that beautiful scene. As if autumn had arrived. Autumn rain moistens everything. Big brother, stop it, please stop it, big brother. Turn around, quickly turn around. At this moment, every werewolf erupted with the greatest strength of their lives, crying out and reaching towards the direction away from the flower rain. Finally, after the last werewolf struggled to escape the range of the flower rain, they panted heavily, finally able to catch their breath. And the wolf king, who was frantically spraying the flower rain, also stopped for a moment. Move away. The second wave is coming. But it was already too late. Big brother, don't keep facing our direction. We can't hold on anymore. We really can't hold on anymore. Everything has become the color of our leader. Finally, after releasing more than a dozen waves of golden flower rain, the Wolf King, pale-faced, collapsed as if exhausted, revealing a face that, although weak, unexpectedly showed a hint of relief, because it had been a long time since he felt so carefree, able to pour out so smoothly. Weak, but happy, and from all directions, in the golden petals, one werewolf after another fell to the ground, their long tongues hanging out, bubbling with white foam. Some fell on the spot, some fell on the migration route. Some, because they were too close, were directly swept away into unconsciousness by the unknown AoE. No one was spared. Special wonder achievement, triggered when more than a hundred targets are adorned in golden armor in your sight, not recommended for the host to actively complete. You have gained a permanent increase, mental power plus one, endurance plus one, willpower plus five. Left left, it seems like they've been wiped out. What should we do? Left left, who had already put on a mask at some point, extended a finger and pointed forward, saying with a playful expression, catch them. After about 15 minutes, Lin found a stream in the forest, turned his tentacles into a vacuum, and stretched it to the roadside, spraying a high-pressure water gun at the dozens of werewolves lying unconscious with foam. Finally, after a simple cleaning, all the werewolves were purified to some extent. However, although their bodies were purified, the spiritual pollution was not something that could be cleansed in a short time. Speak, why did you attack me for no reason? Was it premeditated, or did you have another motive? If you don't talk, I'll let your leader moisturize you properly. Lin pointed to the Wolf King, who was once again spraying flower rain into the distance, trembling in fear. The werewolf instantly shivered all over and said, No, please don't moisturize me. I'll talk. I'll tell you everything. Not a long planned scheme, nor any other ulterior motive. It's just that you happened to be on the route we were attacking that small town, so we thought to take care of you on the way. Who knew? Lin, with dead fish eyes, said, Who knew we hit a snack? The werewolf sobbed, his body twitching, almost on the verge of tears. If they had known that this seemingly harmless young man was a cursed and perverted level curse spreader, they would have been crazy to provoke this guy. Moreover, it was under the blood moon. This was simply a major stain on their wolf lives. Stop crying. Lin calmly pointed at the werewolf's head, saying, I'll ask you again. Why did you attack that small town, and what's the situation here? If you tell me nicely, I won't trouble you. After all, I'm not a devil. The werewolf spat out and said with fear, that town is called Silent Town. Inside, there's a group of survivors from the Sacred World. About, about 300 years ago, the army from the Sacred World opened a passage to this world and descended here. Lin, listening, pondered, oh, what are they doing here? The werewolf widened his eyes, saying, it seems, it seems they are here to search for their lost heritage in that world. 
according to what I know, their world suffered a catastrophe about 3,000 years ago, causing their civilization to fall into decline. Five of the 13 sacred relics they revered fell to this world. So, 300 years ago, they launched an expedition to this world. Lin was stunned, then fell into contemplation. 3,000 years ago. Again, 3,000 years ago. Adding the little family discovered by the Demon Association. The technological civilization and this so-called expeditionary force from the sacred world. There were already three civilizations that faced a crisis 3,000 years ago. What happened at that time? The little family lost their heads. Technological civilization shattered. The sacred world fell into a different era. And all this indicated that, at the node 3,000 years ago, there must have been an unimaginable event in each major world. Since you said it's an expeditionary force that arrived 300 years ago, what happened next? Lin squinted. The werewolf stared, saying, they all died. The werewolf dumbly continued, I'm not very clear about the specific situation, only that shortly after they opened the teleportation gate, they encountered a source-level creature in this world, and then, they were scattered. The current town is one of the survivors left by that coalition at that time. They have a sacred relic in their hands. Lin's heart moved. What about you? You seem to know a lot. Do you have some connection with them? Lin asked. The werewolf hesitated for a while. Then said, our ancestors were members of that coalition before the transformation. Seemingly recalling something, he suddenly raised his head, eyes burning with anger, revealing sharp fangs, and resentfully said, they expelled us. Just because we were cursed with lycanthropy, they heartlessly expelled our ancestors, letting us fend for ourselves in this dark world. So they deserve to die. We will definitely tear them into pieces and... Snap, Lin closed his eyes and raised his fist. The werewolf immediately lowered its tail like a husky, hugging the package on its head, saying, I'm sorry. After this guy's confession, Lin roughly understood the situation here. In short, due to curses and ideologies, the coalition that was dispersed years ago had split again, and this cursed leader was the descendant of part of the coalition scattered years ago. Lin stood up, knocked on his temple, squinted, and said, One last question. Do you know about the Night Doctor? At this statement, the werewolf instantly shivered, astonished, Night Doctor. You, why are you inquiring about them? Lin smiled faintly, leaned in, and said, Looks like you know something, but you don't need to understand. Just answer my questions obediently. The werewolf stammered, Night. Night Doctor, I know. They are a group of lunatics, and they are very interested in the curse inside us. When we just arrived here, we did encounter a doctor wearing a bird mask. He was very elegant, saying that they were a group of doctors dedicated to healing and redeeming this land, and were willing to help us remove the curse and diseases inside us. He swallowed a spit, terrified, and said, We. We believed his nonsense. At first, everything was fine. That doctor did help us treat many troublesome diseases and old injuries, and really helped several of our elders get rid of the werewolf curse. But, he seemed to recall something terrifying, and his whole body shivered. But after healing the curse for those elders, they still insisted that we were still sick, and not lightly ill, needed more in-depth treatment. Cut open, they cut us open, used many strange potions on us, then sewed us up until they declared we were healed. We ran away overnight. Lin was extremely surprised. This, this, it's right. It seems I've found the organization. Where are they? Lin asked seriously. The werewolf was stunned and said dazedly, I don't know exactly where they are. They always have mysterious movements, but there seems to be one of their bases nearby. The people in that town knew about it and wanted to seek refuge with the night doctor. Lin hesitated. Since you are so afraid of those doctors, why do you insist on causing trouble for that small town? As soon as these words came out, the werewolf immediately became resentful, grinding his teeth and saying, Fear is one thing, but hatred is another. We will definitely tear those people into pieces. Before achieving this goal, we will never back down. Lin smiled slightly, stood up, turned to look at the small town shrouded in the night, and said, Understood. Silent town, with the blood moon hanging high. Before one construction site after another, the eyes of the dark and vigilant survivors were filled with some confusion and incomprehension, because it was already deep into the night. However, the group of werewolves still hadn't appeared, which was truly strange. During the time of the high-hanging red moon, it was the most ferocious time for those werewolves. They would never miss the opportunity to attack. But tonight seemed unusual. Mayor, have those monsters given up? It's so late, and they still haven't shown up. 
Something doesn't seem right. The dark young man holding a hunting rifle turned his head, looking at the elderly man with white hair doubtfully. The mayor frowned, gripping his staff, gazing solemnly at the dark night outside the town, saying, No, they won't give up unless something unexpected happens. Before he could finish his sentence, they immediately saw mysterious figures emerging faintly from the depths of the black mist. Alert. Almost instantly, everyone entered a state of readiness, staring intently at the thick fog. Cold sweat dripped from their foreheads. They appeared. Indeed, those cursed beasts had not given up on attacking them. Silver made hunting rifles aimed at the dense black fog. Howl, howl, howl. Wong wolf howls echoed from the darkness. But after hearing those howls, everyone was stunned, looking at each other. Because those howls were completely different from the intimidating and violent ones they had heard before. There was no hint of ferocity and cruelty in the sound. Instead, it seemed to carry a hint of grievance, like the pitiful and aggrieved cries of violated lowlies, as if the red moon narrated their misery. There, the young man widened his eyes, saying, These howls sound a bit strange. The mayor's expression became serious, saying, Don't be fooled by these cries. Werewolves are cunning, and they might be plotting something. Stay vigilant. Everyone nodded, focusing intently. Time slowly passed. The figures in the black mist approached. And in the next moment, they suddenly saw a young man walking out from the black mist. Instantly, dozens of hunting rifles aimed at Lin. Wait. The mayor suddenly frowned. A human. All the people around showed expressions of shock. Although their skin colors were different, it definitely looked like a living human. However, how was this possible? Since they settled here, they had never seen any other beings in this world. Lin smiled, raising his hand, saying, Please don't shoot, I'm just a passing doctor. I mean no harm, I'm friendly. The people around looked at each other, more alert than ever. Because in this wilderness, how could there suddenly be a harmless human? Is it an illusion? Lin maintained a friendly expression, saying, Don't be nervous. Fellow humans don't harm each other. You can rest assured. The people in the town frowned, still pointing their guns at him, not relaxing their guard. At this moment, the dark young man noticed the figures behind him and shouted, What's behind you? Lin smiled, saying, Spoils of war. Saying that, Lin slowly retracted the tentacles behind him. And in the next moment, when the people in the town saw the figures slowly emerging from the black mist, fear and shock appeared on their faces. Those are monsters, werewolves. Open fire. With a shout, bullets shot towards Lin and his group. But Lin could instantly tell that they were using very old flintlock guns, both in terms of firing speed and power, incomparable to modern firearms. In a glance, in an instant, he unsheathed the demon slayer. Clang, clang. Bullets and blades collided, sparking bursts of sparks. Lin intercepted the silver bullets with dazzling speed. Seeing this scene, everyone firing was shocked. The dazzling swordsmanship formed a pitch-black blade curtain, blocking all the bullets they fired. Cool and gorgeous, dominant and enchanting. Hum, in an instant, the night demon blade pointed towards the ground, emitting a dazzling light. Everyone was shaken by the imposing aura. Lin smirked. Everyone, calm down. The people around were stunned, their guns subconsciously lowering. This, this, they swore this was the first time they had seen such a scene. Lin raised his head and smiled slightly. Can we talk now? After all, peace is precious. What do you think? His left hand absent-mindedly raised to touch the smiling head and then looked puzzled at the blood oozing from his body. She tentatively extended a finger, plugging a bleeding bullet hole. Crackle, crackle, blocked on one side, and another side started bleeding. His left hand quickly extended a finger, but with only five fingers on one hand, it was impossible to block all the bleeding holes. Lin smiled, seemingly completely unaware of his bleeding body, saying, Don't be afraid, these werewolves are all my prisoners. You can send someone to check, their current condition might not be able to harm anyone. As soon as this was said, several sharp-eyed young people immediately noticed. Those werewolves behind the human were entangled with crimson tentacles, and their conditions were getting worse one by one, as if they were suffering from a serious illness. Some werewolves even lost all their fur. And not only that, they seemed to emit an indescribable fragrance of night. Everyone looked at each other. Mayor, the dark young man sought answers in astonishment. The mayor looked at the weakened werewolves, then gestured for a priest to come forward for examination. The priest carefully observed their condition, then turned his head, hesitatingly saying, Mayor, they seem to be suffering from some serious illness. Everyone in the town was stunned this time. All eyes fell on the handsome smiling young man's face. A few minutes later, town square, several dozen humans and dwarves, armed with rifles, surrounded the bound werewolves in the square, vigilant and serious, preventing them from causing harm. 
torches illuminated the town square brightly. On the other side, at an open-air table, several priests and gunmen stood behind the mayor, watching the smiling and warm young man on the opposite side with caution. The mayor stroked his white beard, looking at Lin on the opposite side with hesitation, and said, So, you're saying that all these werewolves were subdued by one person? Lin smiled, and replied, Ah, it was a piece of cake. I was just peacefully walking down the road when suddenly attacked, so I had no choice but to act in self-defense. A priest glanced at Lin, quickly walked to the side of the old man, and whispered, I just checked, all these werewolves are suffering from various diseases and are in a weakened state, unable to put up a fight. And, he lowered his voice, judging by their reactions, they seem to fear this person a lot, as if all these ailments are caused by him. With these words, the mayor's face showed a hint of seriousness. Almost instantly, a terrifying name popped into his mind. If the night physicians were extreme in their pursuit of eradicating all illnesses from the biological beings in this world, then the plague doctors were their opposites. They were a mysterious group dedicated to spreading plagues and curses in various worlds. No matter where they appeared, they would bring dreadful plagues and curses. They were an extremely chaotic and evil group of distorters. Could it be? The mayor subconsciously glanced at the young man sitting across from him, looking at his gentle smile, feeling a palpitation in his heart. Dare to ask? The mayor hesitated, are you? Lin smiled and introduced himself, let me introduce myself. I'm Lin, a doctor. I came here to seek knowledge because I heard that the night physicians often appear near this town. So, I decided to pay a visit. Lin was very polite, but after hearing his words, the mayor was shocked, and the people around him changed their expressions. Night physicians, is he here to find those lunatics? What a joke. Because I heard that the night physicians are the most skilled medical group in this world. I have been longing to meet them. However, I couldn't find an opportunity to contact them, so it's been a bit of a dilemma. Do you know where I can find the night physicians? Lin was polite, like a gentleman, and in front of him appeared the mayor's information panel. Lawful good. Extremely strong holy power. One of the accompanying priests of the Holy World Expeditionary Force. After the Expeditionary Force was dispersed, he led some followers to wander around the Dark World and eventually establish Silent Town in the Cursed Territory. Due to accidentally obtaining a sacred relic, he has been seeking a way to return to his own world. Mayor Carmen stabilized his thoughts and looked deeply at Lin, saying, First of all, thank you for subduing these werewolves that attacked us. I can also see that you are not an evil person. But if you want to contact them to seek more advanced medical knowledge, I advise you to dispel this idea as soon as possible because those people are not friendly at all. With these words, Lin immediately approached seriously and asked, So, you know where they are? The old man frowned, obviously reluctant to answer the question. But finally, he shook his head and said, No, I don't know. But our town is indeed within their activity range. Every time the blood moon descends, after those werewolves launch attacks on us, one or two night physicians often appear in the town, helping us remove the curses on the werewolves. Lin exclaimed, For free. The old man was taken aback and said, Well, for free, Lin muttered to himself, so enthusiastic. With these words, the young man behind the old man suddenly became agitated, slamming the table and saying, enthusiastic. What a joke. They are a bunch of lunatics. They claim to be healing you, but in reality, they're torturing you. They, they. Lin looked at the young man. Immediately, he noticed that on his dark skin, there were hideous sutures crawling up. The young man looked at his hands in distress, saying, they cut me open. Although I broke free from the werewolf's curse, they turned me into this stitched monster, and they actually claimed that I was healed. I, I. The old man took a deep breath and signaled him to step back. He looked at Lin with solemnity, saying, he is the child of my old friend. During the last blood moon, he was infected by a werewolf's curse. Although the night physicians helped him eliminate the effects of the curse, they also turned him into this half-human, half-ghost appearance. He shook his head and said, he has no good feelings toward the night physicians, so please forgive him. Lin also immediately noticed, among the humans and dwarves around him, not just one, but several had sutures all over their bodies. Apparently, they had all undergone the night physician's healing. Lin thought for a moment, then smiled and said, I see. He stood up, showing a calm smile on his face. All right, as you can see, I am a doctor, and I happen to have some expertise in plastic surgery. If you don't mind, I can help you remove the scars on your bodies. How about it? With these words, everyone's faces around him showed astonishment. A few minutes later, Doctor, are you sure you can make Karen return to normal? These wounds are very special. If the sutures are removed rashly, he might turn back into a pile of flesh. Don't worry, I am a professional. 
Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.